Hey y'all, Dave here at Double Hook Angling. Uh, the first fish that we start going after before crappie is walleye. Walleye will be hitting the rivers here in the next week or two in Kansas, uh, which would be the first part of March. So, um, these jigs work really well for walleye and crappie, but we're specifically going to tie up a few for crappie, and then we're going to tie up a uh, few for walleye, but first let's do the walleye first. Um, with with these jigs, we in our water down here in South Central Kansas, we have pretty skinny water. Um, the river that we fish for our walleye is comes into the north end of Cheney Reservoir, and where you're probably talking two foot deep. So um, I'm going to uh, in the beginning of the year. Uh, I usually use a, a little smaller, like uh, eighths and uh, size heads in Marabou, and then uh, in the fall I use the big ones, um, so like quarter ounce things like that. Now a guy that uh, is a subscriber and uh, bought some jigs from me last year he is the one that came up with this color combo that he liked which i mean it's a pretty common color um i see a lot of people tying them um but it is uh basically it's purple with a little uh piece of sour truce on it and i used them and they work really well for this color combo it's just not something that i don't normally get into the purples in the marabou but hey he wanted it i really like it and you know Nice shout out to him for, you know, suggesting that color. And I don't mind y'all suggesting colors. It gives me things to think about and maybe we'll come up with something different. And this is the reason why this channel is. So you guys can, you know, see what's going on in somebody else's mind. And my mind is pretty simple when it comes to stuff like this because I just think of the easiest way I can do anything. So, but let's tie this up. And this is going to be a marabou tail. And there will be no chenille body on this, so you're going to keep her tight and up close to the head. Now, <clears throat> like I said, we're going to use the purple, but I want this to be twice the length of the shank of the hook. So from here to the back of the head. And then you're just going to lay it on there where you want it. Stick your thread up between your fingers if you have trouble catching that uh, uh, are the uh, feathers there at the end where you cut it and get those kind of locked down and that is not near enough so get you another piece and you're going to make it about the same length see that one's got too much white up in there now sometimes these feathers will get like this so uh, you know actually since we're going to put the chenille on there I mean the uh no chenille on there and we're going to use the uh, piece of sour truce i think we'll just leave that piece of white because this is for me these aren't for anybody else so i frankly just really don't care but also we might be able to get a few of them out of the way because they are shorter so now <clears throat> when you do this like this i I'm going to come from this way. This way I can cover up the uh, bait keeper part that we cut off. And just be careful. Don't hook yourself. And get it locked down. Hopefully it's about the same length as the rest of it. Okay. Now be careful and just follow it up and keep it tight. Now, we have all of our uh, purple on there, and then you're just going to take a little bit, and that is probably, that's actually more than what I like for this. So, if you want to cut your marabou in half, the easiest way to do it, open up your marabou and cut that center quill or vein or whatever you want to call it, and then you can... Also, this is a good way to stack it. So if you got one that's got a lot of different length in it, you can cut it like that and then stack them good. So you're going to sit this on there. I'll cut it about right there. 
and make sure you get it right on top so it holds it in place. And I've said this many a times with bluegill and crappie and other things like that. They are a schooling fish. They they really don't care what things look like. Most of these jig tie and stuff is for our own appearance and what we like. I'm going to wrap that little tie. It's probably a little bit too much. But um, that is a big, pretty big collar. I'm trying to stack three on there, but it's okay. So. Here's you a, uh, basically, probably one of the first jigs that were tied. Because they didn't have chenille back when they started tying jigs. And they just tied a few feathers on there. So, but there you go. Nice little purple marabou with a uh, little tuft of sour truce on the front. And that color is my own purple color for the head. So, Doing these for yourself, you can whip them out really fast. Um, when you do them for somebody else, you kind of want to, you know, take your time and, and and be real diligent about getting all the tail straight. See, if you look, that that there's a little bit that's longer than the rest of it, but it's okay. It's just a jig and it's just a fish. You know, I've caught <laughs> plenty of fish with only half the feather left on jigs because you run out of a certain color. So just remember, guys. Do your best. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. Get you some material, tie some jigs, and go catch some fish. So that's the, I mean, this is what it's all about. Sharing with the fishing community what your style of tying things up are so other people can get an idea. So I want to thank everybody recently for subscribing. Um... There's one guy that subscribed today, and I looked at his channel. I look at most of the channels when you guys subscribe. You know, just kind of interested and in see if you've got videos of tying jigs and things like that or other things that I may be interested in. So, but this guy this morning, his name is, uh, it was Harry, and he made cheddar biscuits, and they looked so good. So, shout out to you for them cheddar biscuits, bud. So, take it easy, guys. Go tie something. I'm going to shut down here and take the rest of the day off. So, happy fishing.